In this video we're going to talk about the distributive properties for union and intersection. So let's first introduce some concepts or review some concepts uh, that we've seen on how to combine sets in certain ways. So let A and B be sets, then the union of A and B, A union B is the set of all X such that X is in A or X is in B. The intersection of A and B is the set of all x such that x is in A and x is in B. And we're going to prove this theorem. Uh, let A, B, and C be sets. Then the union of A with B intersect C is equal to the intersection of A union B and A union C. And secondly, the intersection of A with the union of B and C is the union of A intersect B and A intersect C. So first we'll prove that A union B intersect C is equal to A union B intersected with A union C. To prove this we have to prove two things, both directions. We have to prove that A union B intersect C is included in A union B intersect A union C. So we have to prove that the subset direction goes that subset relation goes that direction and the subset relation goes the other direction. We need to prove that A union B intersected with A union C is a subset of A union B intersect C. Okay, so we have to prove those two things in order to prove the equality. So let's first prove this direction. So to prove that A union B intersect C is a subset of A union B intersected with A union C, uh, we have to show that if X is an element of A union B intersect C, then X is an element of A union B intersected with A union C. So let's get started by supposing that X is an element of A union B intersect C. That tells us that X is in A or X is in B intersect C. So that gives us two cases to consider. So first in case one, let's suppose that X is in A. Then that means that X is in A union B because it's in either A or B. And of course it also means that X is in A union C. And so that means that X is in the intersection of A union B and A intersect C, since it's in both of those sets. Okay, so case two, let's suppose that X is an element of B intersected with C. Then we know that X is in B and X is in C. Since X is in B, it follows that X is in A union B. Since X is in C, it follows that X is in A union C. And therefore, again, if X is in B intersect C, then X is in A union B and X is in B union C. So X is in the intersection of A union B and A union C. So we've shown that in both cases, uh, if X is in A union B intersect C, it's either in A or it's in B intersect C. But in either case, X winds up being in A union B intersected with A union C. So it follows that A union B intersect C is a subset of A union B intersected with A union C. So now we're going to prove the subset relation holds in the other direction. We're going to prove that A union B intersected with A union C is a subset of A union B intersected with C. So to show that we have to show that if X is in the right hand set, so if X is in A union B intersected with A union C, then X is in A union B intersected with C. So to get started, let's suppose that X is in A union B intersected with A union C. That means that X is in A union B and it's in A union C. Now let's suppose that X is not in A then X in A union B implies that X is in B. Okay, if it's in A union B but not in A, it has to be in B. And similarly, if it's in A union C but we already know it's not in A, then that implies that it's in C. So, that means that if X is not in A, then it's in B and it's in C. So that is, if X is not in A, then it's in B intersected with C. And so X is in A union B intersected with C. So the route we took there is, um, you know, we got this 
x is in a union b and x is in a union c. And so there might be a temptation to break that up into four cases. Um, but we avoided that by taking this approach of supposing it's not in A and showing that if it's not in A, it has to be in B intersect C. Okay, so it's either, the conclusion of that is it's either in A or it's in B intersect C. In other words, it's in A union B intersect C. So that's a nice little technique there um, that might help you down the road when you're proving your own theorems about sets. So we've proved that if x is in A union B intersected with A union C, then it's in A union B intersected with C. Therefore, A union B intersected with C is a superset of A union B intersected with A union C. In other words, A union B intersected with A union C is a subset of A union B intersected with C. Okay, so we've proved both subset relations the subset relation holds in both directions. So the set on the left is a subset of the set on the right, and the set on the right is a subset of the set on the left. It therefore follows that the two sets are equal. And that's always what we have to do when we're proving two sets are equal. We have to prove that each is a subset of the other. Now that we've proved part one of the theorem, we'll prove part two of the theorem, that A intersected with B union C is equal to A intersected with B union A intersected with C. Again, to prove that, we have to prove that A intersected with B union C is a subset of A intersected with B union A intersected with C. And we have to prove that A intersected with B union C is a superset of A intersected with B union A intersected with C. So we'll get started proving that the subset the relation holds in this direction. We'll prove that A intersected B union C is a subset of A intersected with B union A intersected with C. To prove that, we have to prove that if X is an element of A intersected with B union C, then X is an element of A intersected with B union A intersected with C. So to get started, let's suppose that X is an element of A intersected with B union C. It follows that x is in A and x is in B union C. So x is in A and x is in B or C. So that gives us two cases to consider. For case one, let's suppose that x is in A and x is in B. In this case, it's in the intersection of A and B. So it follows that it's in the union of the intersection of A and B with the intersection of A and C. The other case, x is in A and C but then it's in the intersection of A and C. So again, it's in the union of the intersection of A and B with the intersection of A and C. Okay, so we've proven that if X is an element of A intersected with B union C, then X is an element of A intersected with B union A intersected with C. So it follows that A intersected with B union C is a subset of A intersected with B union A intersected with C. Okay, now let's prove the subset direction relation holds in this direction. So we'll prove that A intersected with B union A intersected with C is a subset of A intersected with B union C. To prove this, we have to prove that if X is an element of A intersected with B union A intersected with C, then X is an element of A intersected with B union C. So to get started, let's suppose that X is an element of A intersected with B union A intersected with C. So it's in A intersect B, or it's in A intersect C. As usual, that gives us two cases to consider. Case one, let's suppose that a X is an element of A intersected with B. Then X is in A and X is in B. Since X is in B, we know it's in B union C. Since X is in A and in B union C, we have that X is in A and B union C. In other words, it's in A intersected with B union C. Case two, maybe X is in A intersected with C. In that case, it's in A and C. Since it's in C, we know it's gotta be in B union C. And since it's in A and B union C, we can conclude that it's in the intersection of A and B union C. So we've shown that if X is in A intersect B union with A intersect C, 
then x is in A intersected with B union C. Therefore, it follows that A intersected with B union A intersected with C is a subset of A intersected with B union C. So we've proved both subset relations hold. We've proved that A intersect B union C is a subset of A intersect B union A intersect C. And we've proved that A intersect B union A intersect C is a subset of A intersect B union C. It follows that they're equal. A intersect B union C is equal to A intersect B union A intersect C. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.